Welcome to the Rocket Right Show, starring Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar. Two busy blondes with their fingers on the pulse of all things Louisiana, events, health, leisure, entertainment, and more. It's the Rocket Right Show. And now, here's Betsy and Kay. We are so very excited that you could join us. We have some very exciting announcements, some wonderful introductions of people that you need to know, people that are really special and do some amazing things all across our state. And we're just really thankful for the number of people that have been kind of chiming in with, you know, our radio and TV portion of our show and all over the state. You know, Betsy, we have been dating TV now. You know, it's kind of like when you're like, uh, <laughs> you know, you started dating someone new and you like celebrate, you know, when you've had the one month anniversary. Today has been four four weeks that That's we've right. added TV to our radio presence and so we are celebrating with some funfetti cupcakes. <laughs> you love the sweets. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely and a little bit of wild thing. Uh-huh. Just saying. Well, we, we are a couple of wild things sharing all the wild and wonderful <laughs> things in Louisiana and we have a fantastic show and we are going to be talking to our new Premier Studio sponsor, Partners One, Pete Rizzo. We're going to hear all about how businesses can really really transverse through the difficulties and things by working together and supporting each other in something a little bit unusual you might not have heard of. And then we're going to talk with Judd Johnson with Volunteer Louisiana. You know, Louisiana has an award-winning AmeriCorps program. It's a federal program, but Judd Johnson is the one that runs it for the state. New Orleans and Baton Rouge are award-winning top 10 in the country. So for volunteers, we know all about that. That's great. And we have Dr. Vince Cataldo with Mary Bo Perkins, Our Lady of the Lake Cancer Center, who's going to be talking about a new study that they've got going on looking at cancer patients who have had COVID-19. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about that. And we're going to get some soul slinging music at the end of the show. And we love that. Louisiana musician Lance Dubrock. So you're going to want to stay with us the whole hour. That's right. But first, I want to offer Pete Rizzo, executive director of Partners One, right. a fun cupcake in celebration of supporting Louisiana businesses. That's right. For 20 years now. 20 right? years. 20 years. Don't I have that right? Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a bigger anniversary than our one month. That's true. It no, is. <laughs> a little bit bigger. <laughs> so, so, we're excited that you and Partners One and the membership want to celebrate with us and share the success stories and some of the businesses that make those partnerships so unique. Tell everyone who may not have ever heard of Partners One, which if you haven't, you're missing out. We're glad that you're listening so you can join us in Partners One membership. But tell people what Partners One does and how they support small businesses all across our area. Well, look, first off, we're super excited to be partnering with you guys. Um, like everybody in the business world right now, you're looking around to say, how do we move forward from this new and different and challenging time with the right connections right. to reach people and touch people and help people? Uh, we, we started surveying options to say, we have a product, we have a premise that helps small businesses succeed that drives business away from those maybe more stable big box stores or national chains that are that are more that are better positioned to survive the kind of situation right. we've been through where the local business uh, maybe isn't so we want to be a, a resource for those folks and so we looked for people to say who can help us get that message out and just at the right time not by coincidence i believe mm -hmm. rocket right got introduced to us and you were beginning to expand your market mm -hmm. and you were now reaching the people that we were looking to reach so we're just excited we're tickled to death about our opportunity to share with you uh, partners one is we are a barter exchange we are a group of companies that very simply trade what we have or what we do for what we need and right now while people have inventory of things that they've purchased for resale or time to offer their service and they don't have customers Right, because right. people are shut in, or people are, are still concerned for their health, and, and 
and their finances. Good for them. We're, yeah, but but at this point, their resources are depleted. Yes. Um, so everyone's looking for new clients. They're looking for a way. I met with someone today, and I heard a great analogy. He's a, a 20 year client of mine, and I said, "How are things going?" And he's a good old Cajun boy. And he said, let me tell you, Sha. He said, these people in Louisiana, he said, four years ago, then people learned what rainy day fun was. Yeah. And if you remember in 2016, people got caught without the extra money put away to survive something extraordinary. Right. And the water rose in Baton Rouge and the businesses closed and people didn't have a way out of it. And businesses closed everywhere. And he's one of those lucky business owners that has been successful enough in those four years to put a little money away. And he said, I tell you what, that COVID didn't catch me with my pants down. That's how he said <laughs> And uh, I don't know if I can say that on the radio, but that's yeah, what he yes, said. Yes, you can. And I grew up in Lafayette, but I still don't do a very good Cajun, for, so forgive me. <laughs> I thought you um, did a really I good job of that. But yeah. anyway, he said, luckily I had enough, you know, I, he had some money put away. And he said, but now I'm trying to decide what I do. Yeah. And his decision was, do I live off these extra resources that I've hoarded until this passes, or do I plant some seeds in advertising to start making that money grow? Right. And right now, that's a scary decision. Is it, it too is. early? Is, mm -hmm. is it too early to put money into advertising? Because if we're six more months in phase two, then it's too early to plant that seed. But if I wait and my competitor does it, and then we move to phase three next month. Now I'm too late and I've missed the market. So we have a difficult decision for small businesses right, right. now. So we look out there and he asked me, he said, I, I can get in the magazines, you know, and he said, but I don't know if people's reading that right now. And he said, I listened to the radio and he said, man, he said, I get so scared with the bad news, I cut that off. <laughs> wow. So he was scared if I do radio, people may not hear my ads. So. He said, I'm so glad I'm in partners. He said, because I know y'all are still looking out to bring me customers. That's right. You know, what we do is connect people. He's got a lot with inventory. He sells portable buildings. And right now he doesn't have people looking for him. So mm -hmm. we're looking for people amongst our community. The over 4,000 people in our community over four states that need a portable building that can take some of his inventory and turn that into a usable commodity for him to go buy things he needs. And there's people who need them. It's a matter of finding That's them. That's right. Right. And That's so right. the way partners shares information and resources, it's like networking on steroids. And then you don't have to always write a check. Sure. You know, you know and that's, that's small, so incredible. That small business that has one person or two person that now all of a sudden they they thought they had it covered and now they people aren't coming in and they had decided to start doing social media next month. Mm -hmm. And next month never came. So now they everybody's watching the internet to get their news and their social connections and my mom and pop business was too late to the game because we were saving our money to open our facebook page or our instagram page or we don't understand what seo means right mm -hmm. um we, m m the people that own businesses that are 60 don't barely use the internet or google right so so now they're they're trying to enter back in well, and but you what know, we are, I'm your sorry. connections, what, the, what the, we the, do the is thing with connections, the that's credibility. the whole yeah. thing is that you're connecting and the sources are credible because you've yes. vetted them. But the great thing is, is the perfect example is Rocket Right Radio. You found us because the partner staff is a group of people that are looking for people that want to connect with people and not just anybody. We don't have a carte blanche, y'all come mentality. Nope. We're looking for quality. We're looking for reliability. We're looking for people that we can lend our credibility to in a way that we know when they go out and meet our clientele, they're gonna come back with positive reports and glowing reports on yes. the work that they get done or that the service or product that they buy. Yeah. You know, and it's so cliche to say these are unprecedented times and those words have been so overused. But the truth is, is now was the time of a small business owner can spend his time right now focusing on what's happened, but he needs a partner and a teammate to help him focus on what's coming. And you have a very positive team, Amy Sup. Sure. Let me give Amy Sup a shout out. Let me tell you, when people are uncertain, they need somebody to say, let me share all the information with you 
and we're going to be there with you to help you make the decision. But whatever you do will be well informed, sure. and we're going to connect you with people that have high visibility, high credibility, and help you with your profitability. Sure. And that's what you're offering. And you're offering the chance to reassure and to give hope to people right. because you have the clientele and you have the other people with business expertise. Maybe it's a small business, been in business five years, but there's somebody that's been in business like the person you right. shared the story of who's going to mentor them along through this and give them the reassurance. But today he wasn't just having conversation with a friend. He was expanding his staff from him and his wife, Toot, that run his business to now he's got five salespeople at my office that are saying, we have a client that needs a client. So That's we're going right. to connect those folks. How can people reach you? Simple. Well, and the easiest way is to go to the internet to www.partnersone.org. Real simple, Partners One. You can type the word one, you can type the number one, you'll find us either way. I'm an old school guy, I want to use the phone. So call me at 291-5052. If you don't get me, whoever answers the phone, is equally qualified to help you and give you some more information. Well, and you're our studio sponsor, our premier sponsor. We're going to be talking about Partners One every week and helping you connect. And hang with us. We're going to be right back, and we're going to share a little bit more about what's going on in Louisiana on Rock It Right Show. You got it right, Bet. I did. <laughs> Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. I've had my fair share of experiences with disasters, and I know Louisiana's helping one another is as much a part of our culture as gumbo and Mardi Gras. When it comes to disasters, you can help your community most by getting trained as a volunteer to help with the disaster recovery. For more information about this, visit the websites below and be prepared. road trip and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianastaycation.com. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. And you're 
back with Rocket Right Radio. I'm Dr. Kay Solar in the house with Hurricane Betsy Barnes, and our medical segment is brought to you each week by Mary Bird Perkins, Our Lady of the Lake Cancer Center. And today we are talking with Dr. Vince Cataldo, who is a medical oncologist and hematologist with Mary Bird Perkins, Our Lady of the Lake Cancer Center. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Pleasure. All right, so the Cancer Center is participating in a really interesting study that is concerning COVID-19. So I'm going to let you just jump in and just tell sure. us about it. There's a lot going on with COVID-19, as you all very well know, and uh, so much about a disease that we knew nothing about six months ago. Everything we know about this disease is six months old. Um, from the oncology world, though, what we noted very early on is that our big fear was patients with cancer, patients whose immune system was already suppressed, patients who were now getting chemotherapy, further suppressing their immune system, this is absolutely going to be a group that's gonna be overly affected by COVID. What we noted was that that wasn't exactly what we were seeing, which was fascinating to think that um, it wasn't overly affecting, but that was only our local observation. Thankfully, the National Cancer Institute was noting the same thing and said, we need to make this a true observational study to determine is this truly what is happening nationwide or is this just our own local observation? And that's the basis of the study. Well, so being that it's an observational study, uh, let's talk about how that, how y'all are conducting that study right now. Sure, it's important for patients to know what an observational study is. It in no way impacts the care that is determined between the patient and their physician. In no way. It's only an observation of a study uh, that takes, observational study that looks at outcomes while the patient is undergoing the therapy that is pre-prescribed by the patient and the physician. Right, so this just lends a lot of information, but when people go, oh, I don't wanna be in a study, that's not the case. They're gonna be really contributing a lot of information uh, by just what's going on. It's, in, it's information gathering not only for what we're learning right now for COVID, but how does it affect us in the future when other infectious diseases hopefully never affect us the way this pandemic is affecting us, but in the setting of other infections that we don't know much about. Absolutely. So let's talk about um, who is eligible to participate. What we're looking for is patients who are 18 years of age or older who have an active cancer diagnosis and who are actively or uh, affected by COVID-19. An active infection now or recovering from COVID-19 infection. It's very simplistic. And then what we do with those patients is, again, it doesn't affect how they're treated, but we're not only getting information about how did it impact your follow-up time? Did it impact? Did it make any changes occur because you were actively infected? And then what was the long-term outcome of your survival with your disease or with your potential cure of your disease? So an observational study to say, did the COVID-19 infection in any way impact what would have happened if you were not infected with COVID-19? And how long do you track those patients? How long do you stay in touch with them to get that information? Patients will be followed for two full years on this study. So we're gonna get not only short-term, but long-term outcome data from this study. And you're looking at uh, patients, what, throughout the state, from the greater Baton Rouge area, what, what does that any, encompass? Anyone who seeks their care at Mary Bird Perkins or any of the other 637 participating sites in the nation. So it is an extraordinarily large nationwide study. Okay, that so, is fantastic. Yeah, so this is going on in other states. In and, all states. In all states uh, to uh, hopefully. <laughs> and another point is that this will be a very large study in terms of numbers. 2,000 patients will be recruited into this study. And I think we should definitely point out the fact that uh, in, uh, Mary Bird Perkins, Our Lady of Lake Cancer Center, actually put the first two patients in the nation on the trial. That's that is, fantastic. That is cool. Leaders all the way around. That's what we try to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, now, where can someone go and they learn more about the study? Um, see, am I truly a candidate? How do I sign up? How do I get folks to contact me or contact you that they want to be in the study? So of course, we always say you can go to the website marybird.org to get information about this study and any other studies. But the best way is talk to your physician. 
We have seen very little impact in terms of the follow-up of patients with cancer uh, during their therapy. Very few people have elected to put their treatment on hold and treatments have continued. So we're still seeing patients on an active basis at, at full capacity uh, within the center. So have that discussion with the practitioner to say, am I a potential candidate now that I've recovered from COVID-19? And, and that's a great thing that you're saying, that cancer patients did not put their treatments on hold because so many other that's right. patients put their treatments on hold or were afraid to go in and seek care. If or they were, were discouraged from going to the hospital or, they, or, they or they to a doctor's office. They were just fearful that they might get COVID if they got out in the world. Uh, but can you imagine what a difficult decision patients with cancer had to make to absolutely. say, when we know nothing about this, do I put myself at the added risk of potentially contracting what could be a deadly disease and not treat my already potentially life-threatening disease? So right. it was absolutely. a very difficult, but our experience was that patients were continuing to seek their therapy on, on time. And you know, yeah. and many people who were receiving cancer treatment were employed at the beginning of maybe when they were diagnosed and began their treatment. And then suddenly due to COVID, that's an extra stress, a financial burden when you don't know where your next paycheck might be coming from and you're suddenly having to scramble to make sure that you've got all your insurances covered and everything else. It's an extra burden to people that are already under a great deal of stress and their family members. And not only financially, but emotionally, not right, only a absolutely. cancer diagnosis, but absolutely. the emotional and spiritual burden that, that uh, the pandemic brought on to everyone in addition to their cancer fear, diagnosis. Fear of the unknown. Right. Well, and, and it's great that there are so many ancillary services uh, that cancer patients uh, have at their disposal through Mary Bear Park and the LA Cancer Center. I can't you know, say enough. Other. I can't say enough about the support staff that we have at the center that it goes so far beyond what we have just from the physician standpoint. So many things that we have to offer there to patients with cancer. So is there anything else that, that you want to point out about this study? And I think that y'all have some other things going on that are kind of new that you would like to maybe so bring us, forth tonight. I appreciate it. The study yeah. that's very near and dear to my heart is a treatment strategy for patients with COVID-19. And this is in my hematology world, so not only oncology, but this is for all patients with COVID-19 infection that are admitted to the hospital. And this is what people out there have heard about convalescent plasma. This is the concept of taking the liquid portion of the blood from a person who has already had COVID-19 infection and recovered, and then giving that liquid portion of the blood to a recipient who's having more difficulty recovering. This is not just for cancer patients, although we have treated patients with cancer and COVID-19 with plasma, but this is for any COVID-19 infected individual who is now in the hospital who is definitely more critically ill and requiring admission to the hospital. What's unique about Our Lady of the Lake is that not only are we a center through the large conglomerate Mayo-based study that we're uh, administering convalescent plasma, but we're also one of the few institutions that have the ability to collect the convalescent plasma and administer. So patients locally who have recovered from COVID-19 are treating and helping their own people locally. So the plasma that we uh, obtain at Our Lady of the Lake stays at Our Lady of the Lake and treats the patients who are locally, uh, locally affected by the infection. That is so positive and exciting. It is really the science behind it and the people working toward this. It's fascinating and although we don't know yet if this offers any added advantage, what we can say is that it offers very little uh, known proven um, disadvantage or toxicity to patients. And we all need an advantage. We uh, all do. You know, we're looking for that. We're looking for ways to get those people off the vents, to get those critically severely Well, Louisiana is ranked number two in the country patients. right now. So we are ranked at number two. We're over 90,000 people that have been affected by COVID. We, you know, we absolutely need all the information that we can get, and these studies are so important. And it would be great if we could potentially get some additional help in terms of donors. So to be a potential donor of your plasma, having had COVID-19 infection, and be 14 days out from recovery of your symptoms, that makes you a donor of your plasma. And it's not unlike donating a unit of blood, which we collect at the donor center of the lake. And so these are anybody who has had COVID-19, not somebody who had it severely, anybody who 
uh, was positive for COVID-19. Is that correct? Correct. And even the healthiest of individuals would be the one that we want their plasma for because Absolutely. They, they're more likely to be a potential donor for us to where we can get plasma from them. Well, there's uh, a third of the patients right now with COVID-19, I understand, are under 29 years old, so otherwise healthy. Exactly. You know, they might be potentially that might be something good for them to contribute. So how do, if somebody's listening there going, I had COVID-19 and I'm healthy and I would really like to participate and help others, what do they need to do? Our Lady of the Lake website or contact the Our Lady of the Lake Donor Center, which is right inside the hospital and we will schedule an appointment to collect their plasma. Terrific, I think that that is fantastic. And do you already have folks that are enrolled and, and doing this currently? We treated our first patient on April 24th, and I'm happy to say that as of this morning, we treated patient number 56. It has been extraordinarily large strong. Wow. That's wonderful. So we are going to have to have you back, and we know that the more results we get, the more the ammunition we have at this COVID-19. Thank you so much for being with us. Dr. Dr. Vince Cataldo, thank you for coming for our Lady of the Lake, Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. We just appreciate you so much. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me. Yeah. And stay tuned. We'll be right back talking about Volunteer Louisiana with Judd Johnson. Stay tuned. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. I was diagnosed October 19th. I immediately started with a multitude of scans, and then I was having an eight-hour surgery. My biggest concern was my family, and being able to see me come home every day and know everything is going to be okay. I felt comfortable that I was being treated by some of the best. There were some scary points along the way, but um, it's just kind of like been a little blip in the road. Money, wellness, fun. Rocket Ripe Radio takes you all across Louisiana and the nation with guests who live life to the fullest. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. I'm Dr. K. Solar. You're going to love it. Join us every week when we cover everything under the sun. Live and learn with the Wright Sisters. Politics. Health. Music and entertainment. Local Lagnet. Rocket Ripe Radio. You're going to love it. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda Shaw. We all know Louisiana is as fun as all get out. So get out, take a road trip, and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianastaycation.com. And you're back with the Rocket Right Show. We are so glad that you could spend a little time with us. We want to share some really wonderful people, some great ideas and some different ways that we can all work together and love each other here in Louisiana because we do love everybody here in Louisiana. But we wouldn't be able to bring this to you at all without the help of our sponsors. And so we want to thank Selassie's Jewelry and Fine Gifts. I want to personally tell you a little, a little short story. This bracelet right here looks brand new, doesn't it? Well, my mother got it on her honeymoon in 1957. She and my father went to Mexico City. It was broken, it needed to be rebuilt, and it sure needed a shine because it was pretty dark. 
They rebuilt this for me. It looks brand new. This is a ring that I had repaired, and I bought that ring at Selassie's. And one little stone missing, they fixed it right away. And this is my own personal sterling silver monogram. I love silver. And this necklace I'm wearing is a Philippe Gabriel. I love Selassie jewelry and fine gifts. You need to stop by and see them. The Selassies have been wonderful, and they know what you like, and they know what your loved one likes. So without Stuart and Renee Selassie, we would not be able to bring this segment to you. And also, we want to thank our sponsor, Dr. Boyd Michael Helm with Advantage Health Solutions. He has brought people a type of treatment with medication-assisted treatment for opiate and heroin addiction. And you can find him at Advantage Health Solutions near Our Lady of the Lake Hospital. And so please give them a call at 225-769-6595 if you or someone you love has a problem with dependency or addiction. And so I'm really excited to introduce to you a friend of mine. Judd Johnson has actually come and been on our show when we were just radio a couple of times talking about the incredible love that people in Louisiana have for each other. And we are no strangers to disaster, right? So we're almost coming up on that four year anniversary of the great flood of 2016. And Volunteer Louisiana was on the front lines helping people throughout that horrible event when 170,000 homes and businesses were affected. But they don't just do it during disasters, they do it all the time. So Judge Johnson, Executive Director, you lead these crazy group of people who just live to help others. And we thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you guys for having me. I, I, I love being on the radio show, but the radio show is not quite as festive and <laughs> Look, popping as this. this is and we even have cupcakes for you. Cup, Look at that. Cupcakes yeah. and, and, and a little vino and, and, and special a beverages. Thing. Yes. This, right. is, this is unbelievable. It's, our, is it's our four weeks on TV, so wow. we're celebrating. Yeah, we're you guys celebrating. are naturals. I think this is the space for you. This well, we have fun doing it. We've done it for five years, and so we're going to keep doing it, do it another five, see what happens. I, I, I love it. I love the set. <laughs> it lifted my spirits as soon as I walked in. This is fantastic. Well, I'm so, so glad. We want everyone Thank you for to well, have a great time. You know, I'm really kind of in awe of the people that volunteer with AmeriCorps nationally, but you actually head that up for the state of Louisiana, and you just had the 25th anniversary of Champions of Service, and Baton Rouge and New Orleans were in major market and non-major market in the top 10. New Orleans and Baton Rouge separately recognized for the big generous hearts that we have for people. Share a little bit about what what you're doing to get these people going and motivated because you're doing something right. Sure, well, it's not me. I'm really not doing uh, anything. It's the, the spirit of the people of Louisiana. Yes. Uh, this is what's embedded in us. It's in our DNA to help our neighbors, to help each other. We know that in times of disaster, we see that. We've had so many disasters that have hit our state, but I think that you know, that rolls over into blue sky days. We know in the gray sky days, we can rely on our neighbors, but we've also come to expect that in the blue sky days. So, right. uh, you know, I'm just fortunate to be driving a, driving the train. It's the passengers that are making things happen, you know, with, with Volunteer Louisiana, with our national service programs. You touched on a couple of key things um, that are happening in Louisiana. Uh, last year, we had two cities that were named in the top 10 uh, for in producing the nation. The nation. Uh, and for good things. And for and good, for good things. things. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're we used like to being that. number one and number two on some bad lists, on the bad yeah. Santa list, or on the good Santa list for yes. this one. Um, these these are the cities that produce the most AmeriCorps members. So the ones who are willing to get out and serve and dedicate a year of their lives to service. New Orleans was number two in, in major cities, and Baton Rouge was number six uh, in smaller cities. We were one of only three states to have two cities on the, the list. This is the first time that Louisiana's had two cities. Give yourself a hand. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but That's it's a testament wonderful. to the spirit of the, the people of the state um, who want to give and serve. And there's lots of ways to serve. AmeriCorps is one way. National service, that's a little bit of a bigger commitment. That's giving a year of your life to serving, kind of like a domestic Peace Corps. Uh, but we know that there are outstanding volunteers who do uh, amazing things each and every day in a less formal way. Um, we've seen that, you know, throughout our history. We've seen that in this time of COVID. Yeah. Um, 
We, uh, we partnered with the Louisiana Association of United Ways and with the University of Louisiana at Lafayette to develop an online portal to engage citizens, but especially students in the time of COVID to assist with testing and food security. Um, and in the first week that that was announced, we had over a thousand um, students that signed up to, to volunteer in all sectors of the country. How Campuses. awesome is that? A thousand right? students yeah. said, I don't even know what this new virus disease is, but I want to jump in and help people that are less fortunate than me. Absolutely. That's incredible. And with campuses shut down, they were in their home communities looking for ways to get engaged. Um, and so we were able to connect them with opportunities in their local communities to make a difference. Uh, we've been seeing that over the past several months. Um, you know, we, we're about to announce uh, new AmeriCorps programs that have been funded. Um, we'll have 16 programs that are engaged about 1,200 Louisiana citizens in service. And you mentioned our champions of service. We have some outstanding um, Louisiana citizens that we recognize every year in all the different regions of the state that are just doing amazing work each and every day. So I went to that um, Champions of Service Gala year before last because we didn't have it this year because right. of COVID. I wanted to cry. I mean, the, their stories and their generosity is so incredible. You just can't help but be inspired and just so grateful that they jumped out. And they're not, the winners aren't the only ones that were nominated. There's a whole bunch of people that were nominated. It would be very hard to pick. Well, and you bring up a, a great point. The people who are doing this, they're not doing this to attend an awards ceremony. No, they're doing it for no recognition whatsoever. Absolutely. Most of them are shocked that they've been nominated, Even, much less you know, very chosen humble. to be a winner because that's not, that's not their motivation. Their motivation is to serve and to help others. Um, and it's other people who are putting these accolades upon them. But, uh, you know, it's just a testament again to the spirit of the people of Louisiana, uh, that we have so many great servants that are unsung heroes doing outstanding work every single day. So this is a separate office under the office of Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. It's kind of a separate thing unto itself. And a lot of people don't realize that they're there at the ready 24 seven. We are, we've got three main buckets of what we do. We talked about national service, AmeriCorps, the Domestic Peace Corps, which gives Louisianians and Americans a chance to serve in their own communities. Um, we have about 1200 uh, AmeriCorps members each year that serve. Uh, we mentioned volunteers. Uh, we, we're a one-stop shop. We're the volunteer hub for the state of Louisiana. You go to volunteerlouisiana.gov and find volunteer opportunities anywhere in the state, no matter where you are. Uh, whether you're in East Baton Rouge Parish or Richland Parish or Calcasieu, doesn't matter. There's a volunteer opportunity for you somewhere. Um, and we also do volunteer recognition pieces. And then as you mentioned with disasters, um, we're actually in the state's emergency operations plan charged with coordinating unaffiliated volunteers in times of disaster. Uh, and so uh, you go back to the times of Katrina and, and Rita, up through the 2016 floods, um, engaging AmeriCorps members and volunteers in service. That's what we do. So tell us one or two people, just mention a couple of people, and, and we really should highlight more of them and have maybe some of them on our show. A couple of people that you thought were very deserving of the champions of service. Sure, I'm gonna, um, and I've got my cheat sheet here because there are so many of them that we recognize. It's three pages. Our, yes. It is three pages, but um, one I thought that it was really interesting this year, one of our winners from the Northeast region was uh, Dan Forrest. Um, and he spent more than 27 years volunteering with the American Cancer Society and specifically with their Look Good, Feel Better program. Um, and what he did is he donates, he's, he's, got, some, he's got a skill set around makeup and hair um, okay. And he's donated his time, his travel. He travels all across the state, his supplies. Um, and he helps teach cancer patients um, how to handle the side effects of treatment based on his cosmopolitan prin cosmetology principles. Um, visits patients at the salon or in their home. Um, and also uh, helps families and, and patients throughout that process. That's so important because when you, you, nobody looks good when they're going through treatment and no. they need somebody to make them feel beautiful. And I think, Betsy, we should highlight some of these folks on our Facebook page at yes. 
Rocket Right Radio. Yes. Um, unless you're going to need to change that in the future to Rocket Right, right Show. show. Yes, Rocket Right Radio. <laughs> People can find us on Facebook, and we'll highlight some of these great folks. Well, Judge Johnson, Executive Director of Volunteer Louisiana and our AmeriCorps Corps, thank you so much for being with us. And we hope you'll come back, have a cupcake, sip of wine, Cheers. and we'll celebrate you. That's right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. I appreciate you having me on. That's right. So, so let's celebrate all the great folks doing mm -hmm. such great work, helping each other out in Louisiana. That's right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. I've had my fair share of experiences with disasters, and I know Louisiana's helping one another is as much a part of our culture as gumbo and Mardi Gras. When it comes to disasters, you can help your community most by getting trained as a volunteer to help with the disaster recovery. For more information about this, visit the websites below and be prepared. Clarence Bud Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. No! the feeling. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. I had a meeting with Dr. Barfield and it kind of just hit me. It probably is cancer. After the surgery, I wasn't scared anymore. I was looking forward to getting started with chemo. Not one time did I get a nurse in a bad mood. I was here for five hours at a time and I did not dread coming. To get people from around the country to come to Baton Rouge, and that says a lot right there. That this is place is cutting edge. And you're back with Rocket Ride Radio. I'm Dr. Kay are in the house with Hurricane Betsy Barnes. <laughs> What a celebration today, and we're going to be rocking out with some music. This set? That's this right. set. It's the a set, set right. of music. The we're like That's speaking right. the language of the music <laughs> That's right. with Mr. Lance Dubrock from Lafayette, Louisiana. He is a soul slinger, and he is going to sling us some soul. But Betsy. Tell, tell everybody about a couple of our sponsors while he gets to uh, test out some of my uh, some, wild things. Some wild and, thing um, uh, and a cupcake to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. he, yeah. he can say if he likes it That's and right. he might want to break into wild thing. I don't know. That's but right. I think we're going to hear some of his own music here in just a minute. That's well, right. we want to make sure and thank a couple of our sponsors who have made it so easy for us to transition from radio into television. And one is Laura Sue Events. Go to laurasueevents.com. She does some phenomenal planning, very strategic, very detail-oriented. You need to talk to Laura Sue. If you're planning anything, wedding, uh, engagement parties, corporate fundraisers, you need to talk to her. And also, Jen Oaken Photography. You may be familiar with her work from beach photos and weddings, but you may also be more familiar with her work 
from the Front Porch Project BR and also from the Storefront Project BR. So we just thank those two lovely ladies for doing so much to help support our efforts here. They're great partners and we just appreciate them. Well, and uh, folks can check out Laura Sue's work by checking out our own website That's at right, rocketright.com. Rocket and they may be familiar with uh, Jen's uh, photography because she photographs a lot of musicians. She really does. And so she's actually done a book about blues musicians and it mm -hmm. looks like she might be, and with some other photographers, in a national publication about front steps and front porches. So we're going to have her back on and talk about that. But we love a good front porch, guitar slinging, uh, strummer, and blues musician. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and we love Lafayette. That is that is one of my favorite staycation locations. Oh, yeah, I love a good staycation. Well, you have that gumbo of sound going on, and I love the <laughs> quote right. by Rolling Stone magazine. Yes. That's uh, right. Congratulations, cool. Rolling Stone. Uh, about this yeah. latest project. They really got it. You're a mixture of soul and R&B uh, and country. Yeah. You're doing and us proud, Lance. You're doing life. us You're proud. Trying to grab some friction and to get that from the nation's most prestigious uh, publication in, in the music industry for the last, uh, what, 50 years, I would say? Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, something I never would have imagined growing up. I grew up in a small town of Port Barry, Louisiana, on Hollywood <gasps> Port, 90. It's where okay. I'm from. One yeah. of my dear friends, Kay Ballard, is from Port okay, Barry. Okay, right. I know Miss Kay yeah. Ballard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I so, love her. So, yeah, I just never imagined, you know, getting that magazine off the off of the shelves, so I'd be able to be, uh, you know, a little snippet as small as it was from them. And, uh, and it was it's, great. It's nice. It was awesome. It was perfect. Perfect. Uh, yeah. You know? And so let's talk about your new project because it just came out. It so, did. so give us the lowdown. So earlier this year, uh, well, actually last year, I went on, I put together my first nationwide tour. I went from coast to coast to coast and back home. And uh, uh, along the way, I made some connections and I signed a record deal back in January up in uh, up in Muscle Shoals with the, with the Muscle Shoals Recordings, and we cut the album in January, uh, knocked it out of the park pretty pretty quickly, and we were supposed to have it released in April, and then well, you know, and we know what happened, happened in yeah. April, huh? Wah, yeah, did, wah. So. Yeah. Uh, we pushed it back, and the album just got released at begin at the end of last month, and the first single is out for download. Uh, on digital platforms all over the place. So and and so let's great. talk about that first single. I love that first single. Tell folks a little uh, bit about it. Thank you. It's called "I Don't Want to Lose You, Anna," uh, which you know play on the words from Louisiana. The, the, the and it has a lot of Louisiana like it talking does. in it. It does. It has some really really cool lines in it about uh, you know some nice poetry that kind of describes the smell and the you know the the, the sounds and. That's nice. I think you'll like it. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of Annas from Louisiana that have, that have met <laughs> I recently. I bet there is. Yeah, that have met recently. I've been uh, really digging it. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm happy to be where I'm at right now. So um, let's talk about the recording process. Mm -hmm. So you recorded it in Muscle Shoals That's during right. what period of time? This is at the end, at the end of January. Um, Thank yeah. goodness you got Fresh it off wrapped the press. up before COVID-19 oh, yeah. hit. Yeah, well, I wasn't messing around. Yeah. yeah. We, got, we got in, we knew exactly what it is that we were trying to accomplish. Uh, we got the songs, that we picked the songs that we were going to do, and we, we knocked everything out pretty darn quick. And had you already written the songs, uh, or was that part of the process when you were in Muscle Shoals? Oh, you know, uh, as, as a writer and, and as an artist, you have to balance the two. You know, uh, I ended up only recording... We recorded seven songs in the album. I, I, read th I wrote three of them. My my job, my my purpose was to record the best possible songs that I could find. I had I had particularly emotional points that I wanted to hit for, uh, throughout the whole thing. And uh, songwriters I had met while I was on tour last year had songs that that they wanted to place on me. So uh, that's yeah. great. I want to hear it. it. Good to have good to have friends. Well, I mean, before we get too far into things, I mean, we're going to chat about it a lot mm -hmm. more, but. Uh, Let them salivate what, a little you bit. Wanna, you want to, you want to like play us uh, something from that album? Why don't, why don't you tease us a little bit more about some of the other songs on the album, and then you can tell us which one sure. uh, you want to play for us. Uh, well, I, I wrote a, uh, I covered a song by Mr. Dan Penn, who's uh, who plays here at, uh, probably about once a year down at the, at the, the Zealand Street Market. He'll do, he'll do some shows out there. But Dan wrote uh, Do Right, All Right Woman for Aretha Franklin. Uh, Dark, wow. Dark Under the Street by Percy Sledge. Uh, it Tears Me Up. It, it's just, it's kind of a, a core of the early Muscle Shoals sound. And he had a song that he never uh, never got cut, and he he trusted me with it. So I had a song called What a I Gift. Do. Um, the, the name of that song is what? I Do. 
I do. Yeah, and uh, there's also uh, another writer named Miller, Mr. Billy Lawson, who's also the producer on the album. Uh, he, I'd heard something from him whenever I was on tour, and I met him last year. The song just stuck with me. It's called Mary Jo Brown. The hook is a, it's about a woman who's been staying with a man for 30 years, and he wasn't appreciating her. And uh, he missed the manifestation and liberation of Mary Jo Brown. You know, uh, it's really, really nice. It's, it's a happy leaving story. A happy nice. leaving uh-huh. story. Yeah, right. <laughs> the songs I wrote, the title it's track is... It's not a uh, sad country song. It's got to be sad with a purpose. You can't yeah. just be sad for the sake of sad, right? right. Um, uh, the title track is called Sunny Days, which I wrote with Mark Sherrill, uh, who's known for writing Old Red for Blake Shelton. Um, Sunny Days is kind of a song about about being stuck in in bad times, kind of like how we are right now. You know, being stuck in bad times and knowing that the, the light's at the end of the tunnel and that we're going to emerge later on and, and get that, that that warm, fuzzy feeling of society again. You know? Yeah. Well, and I, and I want folks to see the album art is really cool. And that was also done by a fellow songwriter. That's right. And he, yeah, and he has played the Third Street Songwriters Festival yes, before. So right. I thought I'd recognize it. So amazing. Let's uh, talk been. about that a little bit. So this is the album, Sunny Days. Uh, as you can see, there's the, there's the sun <laughs> in the corner. And that's a, that's a caricature of me and my old brown guitar. And uh, there's a halo behind me. But there's some ghosts kind of kind of ha- haunting the scenery. You know, they, there's, there's some sunny days but there's some there's a, a juxtaposition to get some some haunting happening as well it's kind of a, a well we are from louisiana that's right oh <laughs> there's yeah. a few spirits hanging around oh, there's some tatas they call that back home yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh abe does some great artwork i love watching his stuff i'm thinking mm-hmm. you need high top tennis shoes with that on it to sell as uh, your I merch did, did you see his high top i did he he, he, not, he did this week yeah i pick up what you put down i like that <laughs> idea a lot Oh yeah, I'm always thinking about the merch wagon. Uh, That's I right. I haven't had a pair of high top shoes since the late '80s. I don't think so. It's might time, be time. time we'll be I think back. you might need that. That that'd mm-hmm. be the, the the playing wardrobe. So, what of that batch of songs do you want to break out on us now? I'll do Sunny Days. Okay. Because we, we all music. need it, like you said. had so many rainy days Seems like a flood of tears has washed some love away Oh, but things won't always be this blue I can see some sunlight shining through So Bring on the sunny days Chase these dark clouds away Feel your warm sunlight on my face My world's been dark and racing Sending down those warming rays We all could use more sunny days Cause when that sun is shining so am I It shines so bright, it illuminates my world And that's when I grow In your luminous glow So, bring on sunny days Keep those dark clouds at bay Feel your warm sunlight on my face My world's been dark and Sitting down your warming rays We all could use more sunny days You whistle along at home if you want Sunny days, 
chase these dark clouds away Feel your warm sunlight on my face Oh, 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 my world's been dark and gray Send down your warming rays We all could use more sunny days Oh, yeah. oh won't you send more sunny days We all could use more sunny days. Woo! That was uh, awesome. Amen. That Lance Dubrock. I'm on that whistling, and I'm saying if it sounded off, I was no. like trying to harmonize. Okay. <laughs> I dug it. I was just in the wrong key. That was it. A, but it's, I wanted to break out and become a background singer, I tell you. Like maybe Look, I feel so like good. I've been to church. I good. feel like I've been to church. Yes, Amen. Well, I'm because tell that you. just made me so happy. Good, good. It well, made me so happy. You are doing us so proud. I appreciate well, you know, that so I'm going to tell you, if you, the target. if you think his guitar playing is good, you ought to see him twinkle the keys. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm really thinking. <laughs> I'm really thinking that we need to do like a little virtual music festival on our show and have you and maybe a couple of other people come and we do nothing but music for the well, entire you know. time like on TV mm -hmm. to share it with all our family uh, and friends well, in Louisiana because that intense. is who we are our soul oh. you you know I can't sing but I love those I that do that. it's true <laughs> it's true I'm sad mm -hmm. to say I wish I could but I honestly feel like our rhythm, our heartbeat, our soul. Totally. Right now, we are aching for that kind it's of positive true. message true, and the beat and the rhythm that we're so used to everywhere well, we go. I, agree. I think I agree. that we're also uh, really craving the music. And I know we I was headed over to Lafayette to see mm -hmm. you, and that show got canceled. That's right. It was like when things You're were going to open up show? a little bit, and then they closed back down. So, are you playing anywhere, Lance, or uh, are you got uh, any kind of? virtual thing that's I'm, going on a regular basis. I'm trying to basis. keep things off of the social medias right now uh, as much. I don't want to uh, I don't want to saturate the product too too, too much, you know. Right. But, uh, Bring it out right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm uh, I just had, I was supposed to go to Alabama this weekend, matter of fact, to go run and do a tour, but that just got cancelled. And just this, the situation we're in right now, I have some theater shows booked for the end of the year uh, across the country. And I have a few piano shows that I'm doing around town and a lot of private, private work a lot of private parties. There still are people doing private parties out there. So, uh, so people need if to you're download. a hustler, you know you're going to survive. People yeah. need to download your music. Absolutely. They, they so, need it. So where can they find it? Where can they find you uh -huh. to follow you everywhere so that they know when you get to play out live right. and we're also going. to download your music? Where's oh, the best spot? We all come, Chef. We come. It's uh, uh, LanceDubrock.com. That's D-U-B-R-O-C at the end. And... Um, and at Lance Dubrock on all the major social medias, you can find me. Absolutely. I love your and voice. And search him out uh, wherever you consume your music. Mm -hmm. Stream it, download it, and listen to it so that you will feel good. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, we have got to keep supporting our Louisiana musicians, and we're going to do that every single week. We're going to do everything we can to support those who support our state and bring a lot of love to our state sure. by sharing their heart and their soul. And we just thank everybody for hanging with us and enjoying a little good time, a little good music, and the way that we are always proud to be from Louisiana. Certainly. Thank and you to hey, all the blondes for having me, by the way. You guys rock. I love before you we close, thank you. put a cupcake in her mouth uh -huh. and try to end the show with our tagline, which is, if, if you're, you're gonna, gonna rock it, it make, make sure you rock, rock it, it right. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. 